Hi everybody, welcome to my bonus video on how to find the centroid and how to calculate the moment of inertia of an irregular cross section. In this case, I've taken the irregular cross section to be some sort of a T-shaped thing. And in reality, you can have many other irregular shaped cross sections, but the principles used to find their centroid and the moment of inertia are going to be exactly the same as the ones I'm going to develop here. So, we know that Q, the first moment of area, is equal to the integral of y dA. And you can work through this and also prove equals to y of the centroid of a piece times the area of that piece. That's what we're going to use the most in this video here. And we can find the centroid of something by calculating Q by A. Alright, so we can rewrite that and say the centroid is equal to the sum, or the integral in this case, but since we're doing finite chunks, we're going to say it's the sum of Y A over the sum of the area. Alright, and the sum of the area, that's just the total area. Okay. Yeah. And you can kind of prove this by multiplying this onto this side and saying that the centroid times the area of the piece must equal to the centroid of all the individual pieces times by their individual areas. Alright? So this is how we find the centroid. And once we find the centroid, we can find the moment of inertia. And in our case, we want to know the moment of inertia about the centroid that we found because the equations that we use always seem to call for the moment of inertia about the centroid of a piece. So in our case, the centroid we know is going to be somewhere here. Alright, we're going to give an arbitrary distance. So when you calculate the centroid, you need to pick some sort of base value where you take your y to be zero. And it's usually easiest to take y to be zero right at the bottom of your contraption. Alright, and I'm going to try call the distance to the centroid. y bar is centroid, is c for the centroid. And then each of these little blocks here has its own centroid. All right, there we go. So now when we go to find this y bar centroid of the whole thing, it's basically going to be like some sort of average between, you know, the q of this piece and the q of this piece, because the q of the all the pieces added up should be the q of the whole thing. All right, and that's what we're doing here, just with a little bit of a rearrangement. So when I go into doing this, there's lots of numbers that are just floating around, and sometimes it's easy to lose track of what's going on. So I find it useful to make a table and arranging it very, you know, specifically to be this way. I'll draw it out for you here. All right, so there's the first step. I've left this open for later when we do the moment of inertia. So I'm going to say piece. As you notice, I've labeled some subscripts here already. So this is going to be piece one. This is going to be piece two. So in order to solve this equation here, we need to say, for our specific case, it's all right. And this table gives us a nice, easy way to calculate those without losing track. Especially the table is useful if you have, you know, pieces where you have all sorts of shapes stacked together. And then you want to do it on an Excel spreadsheet where you use the same idea. So it's piece one, piece two, y bar to the centroid of piece one. That's half of 0.6. It's 0.3 meters. 
y bar to the piece 2, that's 0 0.6 plus half of this distance. Because we know the centroid of any square or rectangular cross section is right in the center of it. Turns out to be there 0.675. The area of piece 1, all right, 0 0.1 times 0 0.6. And the area of piece 2, the top, times this little bit here. And I'm just assuming that we're keeping the units here, right? This is meters squared, meters, I'm not bothering to go through and keep them in. And then y bar times a is this times this. See how this makes this easy? This times this. All right, so the total area, we add these up. We get... All right, like we said, y of the centroid is basically the sum of y bar a times y bar a, and that's the number we have here. Over the total area, that's the number we have here, so we can write All right, and this answer makes sense. We shouldn't expect the centroid of the whole thing to be up in this piece here, and we shouldn't expect it to be below this centroid, but it's at 0.545 up from the bottom, so that's, yeah, about right there. All right, so basically what we did is just we uh, took Q of the overall piece to equal to Q of all the pieces, and then we just rearranged it, we had a nice table, and solved. So let's go into finding the moment of inertia. So we know the moment of inertia of one piece about its own centroid, in the case of a square piece, is I V H cubed by 12. All right, and furthermore, we know that the moment of inertia of something that's, you know, moved away from its own centroid and it's spinning a distance away, or it's acting a distance away, it basically, we'll call it that total moment of inertia, is equal to I of the piece about its own centroid plus its distance away squared times its area. All right, so this is the uh, parallel axis theorem. All right, so I'll just restate it again. The moment of inertia of a piece about a line that's not at centroid, about an axis that's not at centroid, is basically the sum of the moment of inertia about at centroid plus the distance away from the axis you're talking about to its centroid. That distance squared times the area of the piece squared will give you the moment of inertia of that piece. So we need to find all the components of this. So essentially this is this plus d squared a. So we can say, I used i here. You can also use m if you want to call it m. So let's just find i c d and then d squared a and i total. The, the moment of inertia about its centroid is b h cubed by 12. So just going in through to solve that for piece 1, b is this, h is this. So b h cubed by 12 turns out to be and for the second piece, just about its own centroid, b is of course this whole length now, the base length here, sorry, and then the height cubed by 12 Now D, this can be a little bit confusing. So for D1, that's the distance from the centroid of the thing to the centroid of the piece. So in our case, D1 is this distance, and D2 is this distance. All right, so basically the centroid of our whole thing to the centroid of the individual piece. All right, and in that case, we can find it because we know we know what the location here is and what the location here is. So basically, can take y bar two minus the centroid. So this minus that.
and in this case it's for number wait I think I messed this up And then for this piece here, it's y from the centroid minus y1. And d squared times a, that's just this times that. And i total then is just ic plus d squared a, or this, so this plus this. All right, and then of course the overall moment of inertia has the sum of those two small moments of inertia. All right, so there's the technique I like to use to find the centroid and the moment of inertia. Let's quickly recap. So to find the centroid, we realize that Q total is equal to the sum of Q individual. All right, that has to be true. And Q total using this YC is yc times a, so this is the, of the centroid times the area total, is the sum of the distance to an individual centroid times the area of an individual centroid. So to find this, we just divide this through by a and get this formula here. All right, and then we can expand that out for our specific piece. It only has two uh, sections that we can break it down into. And then we just move through and solve for each piece using this handy table. For moment of inertia, we realize that the moment of inertia of a centroid of a piece, a square piece or a rectangular piece about its own centroid was bh cubed by 12. And since we wanted to find the moment of inertia about the centroid of the entire thing, we need to use the parallel axis theorem, which allows us to calculate the moment of inertia of something if we know its own moment of inertia about its centroid, but then we're displacing it a distance away. A distance away we call it d. And then we can find the overall moment of inertia then by adding those two together. We went through with our handy table again, solved for the total value, 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3. All right, I hope this video helped you guys out, and we'll see you around.